Hi everybody, we are live. Uh, I'm Anita from Ketogenic Woman and with me tonight is Christy from Meeting Wellness. How are you tonight, Hi. Christy? I'm doing great. How are you, Anita? Good. Uh, I've been looking through the chat and uh, everybody is cold. Are you cold? Yeah. Um. I'm afraid to say because I think I'm going to get run off the show. Uh, no, no, it's it's 60 de it's 60 degrees here in sunny Southern California, not negative 60, 60. Just plain old 60, <laughs> Just plain old above 60. 60 on the positive side. I, yes, I think a lot of people would mm -hmm. like to throw tomatoes right now know, or something like that. Uh, <laughs> lots, lots of cold people, you guys. Please stay warm, stay safe. Uh, I, yeah, we're, I'm in Western Canada and we usually are not this cold. My hummingbird freezer or my hummingbird feeder kept freezing and I kept having to bring it into thaw. Uh, so tonight I just want to, uh, let's get this started. Um, I want to uh, just let you know what we're going to be doing and a couple of announcements. Um, we have the wonderful uh, Bonnie and Melissa are in the uh, chat there. They are moderators and will answer questions and, and uh, you know, provide links where they can. Uh, so thank you to those two. And uh, I just want to say next Sunday, Alice and Kevin will be back and we are going to talk about exercise. I'm very excited to have them have them back. They've been working with me on my exercise routine. We have a video of the week and it ties into our topic tonight. The video of the week is from Nia's Way. It is her budget beef jerky that she made in her regular round I think it's a Nesco. Uh, if I, I don't know if I'm saying the name of her dehydrator correctly, um, but I thought her method was just genius and I'm going to try her method, but in my square dehydrator, we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, check out her, her video. Um, so, uh, tonight we're going to talk about saving money, uh, budget shopping and specifically saving money on, on meat. Uh, it is, probably even if you're not carnivore if you're you know here and you're low carb or keto meat is a pretty substantial part of your budget and so uh what what christy and i did was we had a discussion about the prices in canada versus us and all that because i'm canadian she's from california so we made a shopping list and it was an identical shopping list and she went off to Walmart in California and I went off to Walmart here and we bought the same stuff. And then we came back and we compared prices and some interesting things that we found. So, so that's, uh, you know, I'm setting you up for the clip that we're going to watch. Um, and then we'll, we'll just watch a few seconds of this clip. And uh, the whole clip is only, four or five minutes um, and, and we'll be stopping and talking about some of the things that we found and then we want all your questions. So uh, we'll be answering those. So let me just come over here and see if this works. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Grocery shopping. Oh, much either. So I try to, I try to get there. I got to get it early. Um, we both went with oh. the same list. So let's start with our eggs. Oh. I have, hey. there I we bought go. the cheapest eggs, one dozen of just large white eggs. So awesome. they were two ninety five yeah. a dozen or 25 cents per egg. Okay. Well, I bought the same thing. So where I am, it's the great value brand, uh, just the white egg. It was one dozen eggs, and my eggs were a dollar thirty for wow. the dozen, and that comes out to eleven cents per egg. Wow! Uh, so <laughs> I have the same brand, by the way. These are great oh, value. Okay. okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop that for a, a moment. So I can't believe the price difference of eggs between here and there. Um, and so, Christy, we talked yeah. about the eggs because. Uh, 
I mean, I normally buy organic and you normally buy pasture eggs. <laughs> I do. What, yeah. So what did you think of those eggs? Did you, you use them, right? I did use them and I, you know, I mostly notice the difference if I'm just eating eggs, you know, like some over easy eggs. I feel like mm -hmm. when I eat the pasture raised eggs, like I have to eat fewer of them. Like there's more nutrients in there or something. Okay, um, yeah, that's that's a good point. But um, I did interview like a pasture egg farmer, um, and she mm -hmm. really convinced me about the the quality of the the yolk in those pastured right. eggs. Um, you yeah. know, and the difference that there is. However, I will say if if my budget got really tight, I would not be afraid to buy those. Yes. You know. Dollar thirty a dozen um, eggs. Yeah, I thought California was expensive. Canada, you guys, it was more than double for just some plain. Yes, eggs. it was. Uh, yeah, I don't know if like the clip seemed a little like it was uh, choppy. I don't know if you if you heard that as well. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on there. But yeah, it was more than double. It's 25 cents per egg, the cheapest eggs in the store. And, yes. and you said yours were 11 cents. So 11 cents an egg. Mm -hmm. But, you know, still uh, here, I mean, eggs is one way to really keep the budget low. Um, when when you're trying to figure out, you know, if you have a certain budget, whether it's $10 a day or whatever it is, um, eggs is one of those things that can pack a lot of nutrition, even even those those eggs. Um, they're going to yes. pack a lot of nutrition with, you know, just 25 cents. Like for 25 or 50 cents, I would definitely add a couple of eggs, you know, to, to the meat that I have in the day, you know, just to get a little bit more, so... Yeah, that's a good point. It's a good way to kind of bulk up your plate um, yes. and get some extra protein and all those vitamins in the yolk for not very much money. Yeah, and and that that extra variety. So let's mm -hmm. let's see let's see what's next on here. Uh, I gotta try and get this up on this. Like, there's some. Whoops, 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 whoops. Okay, let me. No, I'm trying to get it back up on the screen. Uh, okay. Is it going to come up? Mm. Hang on. Technical issues. Uh-oh. Oh, here we go. Um, there was, so uh, like there you, I looked at the butter that was 6.48 a pound and it was the, um, don't think it was, it might have been great value or whatever the house brand is that Walmart has. And I, I opted to pay an extra 40 cents for this one because this one only had two ingredients um, being cream and salt. Uh, it, it It is, now be prepared to be shocked because we have high butter prices here. It turned out to be $5.10 a pound for this or 16 cents a tablespoon. Okay, so this, I got the Great Value brand. That's interesting because here where I am in California, this is the Great Value brand, which is the Walmart brand, and the ingredients are just cream and salt. So it doesn't have whatever that mysterious third ingredient is. Interesting. Yeah, and the price on this is $4.18 a pound. That worked out to $0.13 cents per tablespoon. Let's talk about bacon. Oh, okay, I'm going to stop that uh, and put put uh, me and Christy back. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, so uh, the, the, the mystery ingredient. Yeah, this um, is a good one. Yeah, so it's called Anato, and I had never heard of it before. Um, and I did look it up and it is, it's a, it's a, it comes from a plant. It's a large seed pod of some kind. And it's a, it comes from the tropics. So in my mind, um, you know, it feels like that's got to be a tropical seed oil. I don't know, but I know that a lot of people uh, in other countries use that for color and texture. You know, at, like people have been sort of contacting me ever since I mentioned it on one of my mm. Tuesday talks. I just feel like, does it need to be in butter? Does it need right. to be there, right? And, and I just and don't I, know enough about it. 
I had never looked for it before until you mentioned it. And so then, of course, I started looking for it and I found it in some cheddar cheese that my husband had purchased. It was like the sliced cheddar cheese in the bulk pack. Okay. And it was like, well, why is that in there? Most cheese that I see doesn't need that or have that in there. Um, and I think it does say that it's for color. Okay. Um, but it just see, I'm, I'm kind of with you. Like if I can find cheese or butter without it, I prefer to just keep the ingredients list as minimal as possible. Yeah. I, I, I feel the same way. I'm going to pay, I'm going to pay 40 cents to not have it. For sure. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what was so intriguing to me was it's the same brand. It's a great value. I know. But what they sell to you is not the same as what they sell to us. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. And and maybe, you know, maybe in Canada, they allow that ingredient to be in butter and where you are, they don't. Yeah. Uh, so who knows? But, you know, it's a lesson in reading your labels. And we have another interesting food coming up with the same idea. Um, but let's go back to the bacon for a moment. Yeah, for um, sure. So hang on. We're going to have that clip. how many <laughs> strips were in here because in Canada along with inflation we have shrinkflation they used to sell bacon by the pound and now they sell it by the 375 grams which is probably equivalent to your 12 ounce package okay um, I'm thinking and so I decided okay the best thing to do was to convert it over do price per slice so this slice of bacon costs 51 cents for one slice okay well this is my bacon and at my walmart well this is the great value brand and yeah. i went with the regular slices so you can get thick yeah, slice or regular so this yeah, is just this the is regular, regular slices too. yeah yeah so you can buy it in um 12 ounce packages like you said but i grabbed the one pound package and for this one pound of bacon, it was $6.16. There are 14 slices in here, and that worked out to 44 cents per slice. Okay. 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 There's our bacon. So I'm excited to talk about bacon, Anita. So can I okay. just tell you one of the things that um, I learned, not, I mean, I just learned along the way, and part of it was because of the shopping trip. Um, you know, Walmart isn't always the cheapest. And one day I was just walking, minding my own business, <laughs> walking through the grocery store and I saw this little package of bacon um, and it said bacon ends in pieces on it. And um, it was $2.99 a pound. Um, and so when wow. I looked at, yeah, right? And so when I looked into it, I was like, what are bacon ends in pieces? And it's just like, what's left over when they cut the nice pretty slices that they're going to sell you for $6.99 a pound. So th these pieces aren't pretty. You might get like a fatter piece or, you know, uh, you know, a short piece, yep. a long piece. They're just kind of random leftovers, but um, they're just bacon. And at one of my local grocery stores, if they don't have them on the shelf, I can just order them for my butcher. So I'm currently getting all my bacon for $2.99 a pound, except this week they went on sale for $1.99 a pound. You oh guys. my goodness. I bought That's... 10 pounds of bacon. I bet. <laughs> yes, I did. Amazing. That's a really good tip. Everybody should... <laughs> <laughs> bacon ends and pieces ends and pieces oh mm -hmm. my so but i do uh concur with you when you said you know right right there that walmart is not always the cheapest because i think a couple of days after that down the road here i was in a store and they sell the 500 gram packages which is more than a pound for cheaper okay. than the 12 ounce package mm. at Walmart. And it, to me, it looked like about the same. There really wasn't any difference in ingredients or anything like that. Certainly not as low as $2.99 a pound, but it, it was still a good deal com compared to Walmart. Yeah. So um, let's see what else is in the, uh, in the shopping bag. <laughs> And sorry about it. it's taking a long time to load up these clips for some reason. There, we, here we are. 
so you know still less but uh you know not not too far off and you got hamburger right or ground I beef did. i got ground beef yes ma'am my ground beef uh they did sell them in a per pound package there so that that so it was it's much easier for me to figure out <laughs> so this works out to four dollars and 42 cents a pound okay well my walmart had ground beef in the trays like that but it's more expensive when you buy it like that in the chubs it's cheaper but this is oh. a pound of ground beef Okay. It is um seventy three twenty seven, and I've never eaten seventy three twenty seven. I've been buying eighty twenty, so I'm actually excited to try it. But it, and it is this was the cheapest ground beef that they had in the per, per pound packages. Okay. Um, so this was four dollars and sixty two cents for this pound of ground beef. So uh, just a little bit more than mine. Yeah, you beat me on that one, Canada. Cents, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, <laughs> yeah, ground beef. Uh, let's mm -hmm. talk about ground beef for a minute. Yeah, so when I first started carnivore, I would eat ground beef by the, like I would make ground beef bowls, like power bowls, if you yeah. want to call them that, or BBB eat bowls. I couldn't get enough of those. And then I went into this like, I can't do another bite of ground beef like that. Like I, it's not a feeling I've experienced with any other kinds of meat, except for some reason, ground beef. Have you experienced anything like that, I, Anita? I, I have, and and it's funny because it does happen more with ground beef than with other meats where, mm -hmm. where I'm like, okay, I've had enough ground beef for a while. I, I think I'm gonna do something else. But the good thing about ground beef is that, at least here, it goes on sale quite often. I was just checking my, my Flip app today and right down the road from me, and I'm almost tempted, if there wasn't so much ice out there, I, I, I would go right after this, uh, <laughs> right after this live stream. Uh, it's on sale for $3.49 a pound. Nice. And so when you think about that, if you are on a tight budget and say, like for me, I try to hit 140, 150 grams of protein in a day. Okay. Um, so that would be about a pound and a half of meat. Uh, if yeah. you try to do that with with ribeye or something, it's you know that cost is going to add up. But I can do I can do a pound and a half of this ground beef for five bucks. Or, you know, five yeah. bucks a day. I could have my protein, and I and that's I mean I don't if it's a you know add a little bit of butter or a little bit of tallow and and that would be all I would need. I, I could afford to add eggs to it too. Yeah, absolutely. I can I, organic eggs too. Organic <laughs> eggs with those yolks with all the vitamins. Whereas yes. I don't, I don't stress out too much about if the beef is grass fed, finished or whatever. Um, no. uh, you know more. But um, so yeah, the beef ground beef has been on sale several times here for two ninety nine a pound. Again, at other stores other than Walmart, right? Yes. So two ninety nine a pound is a is a great deal. Um, and the other thing I found is if I put it into you know, I, I started doing other recipes because I was like, it's just economical and I want to find a way that I can make something that I'm not not having an aversion to. So yeah. um, when I put it in like to a meatloaf or I made these little mini beef cups with a little bacon, a little egg yeah. with the ground beef, I mean, they were delicious. And I, I, all of a sudden I wasn't sick of it anymore. So yeah. that was kind of cool. Sometimes you just need a variety and, and ground beef uh, lends itself to so many different recipes, you know, ground beef soup, you can make mm -hmm. a meat side, you can make, you know, meatloaf, like you said, all kinds of things. And, and even a stew with other meats and some ground beef in it, the ground beef kind of cuts the cost of mm -hmm. that whole recipe, uh, just because it itself is so inexpensive. So, so yeah, I think, I think it's a good thing to stock up on, uh, when it's on sale. Um, so let's go to the next clip and see okay. what we have. Uh, the, the one and only thing. So let's go to pork. We both wanted to get some pork ribs. I have some nice, thick, juicy ones here that I was wanting to get the bone ones like the country ribs that you had shown me mm -hmm. earlier so that's yeah the one you have they they didn't have uh, but they these were big meaty ribs uh, but they do have bones in them so um they work out to 
uh, $5.93 a pound. Okay, well, these are my boneless country-style pork ribs. These are very good, very fat. I'm sure you can see they're very yeah. fatty, too. I love them. So these are $4.14 a pound. This particular package was 1.72 pounds, so it was $7.12. Wow. This package here. The okay. I don't have a lot to say about pork other than I discovered after doing this shopping trip that Costco is way cheaper for pork than Walmart. Oh is. yeah. <laughs> so so the only thing I will say about pork is I love pork. Um and I but I cannot do it every day. So I bought one of those from Costco, the pork um shoulder and I did it in the crock pot. Yes, oh my gosh, okay. it was delicious. So good. I ate it like 3 days in a row cuz obviously it's Costco size, right? So I've got all this pork you know, and my son loved it. But after three days, I, I noticed my energy was like, yeah, kind of waning. And then I cooked up some like beef flanken ribs. And I was like, Oh, there it is. Like, so I can do pork, but I can't if I do it too much without putting in some beef. I, I, I do feel, notice my energy. Yeah, drained. I feel exactly the same way. I feel like I have to use it um, uh, sparingly. You mm -hmm. know, uh, like, yes, it's a good way to decrease the budget. But I, it, it, it has to be sort of a small percentage of what I eat. Um, I just, you know, beef is what does it for me. It gives mm -hmm. me that energy. So, yeah. So I, uh, but big, those big roasts, those, those are a really good way to go. So They're good. often on sale too. Yeah. yeah. And okay. those boneless country style ribs I bought are pretty good in the instant pot and finish off under the broiler. I um, have to found... give them a little bit really good. Yeah, and I have since that video that we did, I have found those uh, at a local store, and oh, they great. are very good. I agree. I really, mm -hmm. I mean, I never even knew they existed until you showed me that. So I can't okay, believe so I taught you something about food, I, Anita. Oh, <laughs> I can't come believe on. it. <laughs> you guys, she's amazing. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, I learn new things every day. So yeah. Um, so let's go to the next thing. See, see okay. what else we have in our bag of tricks there. Oh, Canadian price was 1880, but oh, I'm still it, about it is 2.2 pounds approximately because it's one kilogram. And yeah. are those kind of bones? Can you save those bones to make? Do you use those type of bones for your bone broth? Or you know, you I never. Just... Well, I never have before. These are the little round. I'm gonna try the kind of round bones. Oh my god! Yeah. I you know the WalMarts here in in Canada do not have great meat selection and uh, so I ended up getting a blade steak which is just like a chuck steak in the U.S. which is you know we've been calling it the poor man's ribeye. Mm -hmm. It is nicely marbled with with fat. I've been eating these a lot lately and liking them. So this one works out to seven dollars and fifty cents a pound, and this is this package is exactly a pound. Nice. So this is where my splurge was a little bit on the fact that this is the picanha roast, yeah, um, otherwise known as a uh, beef top sirloin, but it has a fat cap on the top. You know, that's about yay thick. Oh, I know. <laughs> I love it. So the price per pound on these, it's gone up about a dollar a pound over the last since I've discovered it, but it's still, it's $8.74 a pound, which is a lot better than, you know, a ribeye or something yeah, like that most of yeah. the time. But this particular one was 2.3 pounds. So I normally would get a little bit smaller one if they had it, because I'm usually the only one eating this, but this was the smallest one they had that particular day. So this came out to $20.10. So worth it. Oh yeah, that, I can get, you know, two and a half meals out of that. So yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Okay, so we got to the beef there. Um, yeah, so those, so yeah, those are on the higher end of what we bought. But when you compare a blade steak or a chuck steak and a picanha steak to what a ribeye or a T-bone or any of those cuts cost, it's still a huge savings. Yes. And those picanhas, I think, give ribeye a run for their money. Like, it's not the same flavor. You know, like, mm -hmm. I can eat a, I can eat a chuck eye and feel like it's, it's similar to a ribeye. 
Picanha has a different flavor from a ribeye, but it is delicious in its very own way. Um, and I, I do like them equally well. And so, um, yeah, I buy one of those once a week and make it on the weekends and then just eat off of that, you know, throughout the weekend, two yes. or three days, you know, it's great. Yes, I love those. And our Costco, bless their hearts, because uh, I've seen pictures, people sometimes post pictures of what they buy. And mm. I've seen them trimmed of their fat cap and I'm, no. it makes me sad. But the Costco that I go to, they leave it on. It's almost like they, they find the thickest one they can and put it out. And I'm so grateful mm, to them for that's that. That's awesome. Yes. I, and, and, you know, uh, yes. So at Costco, they sell them three to a bag and it can cost you $50 or something. And it feels like you're putting out a lot of money. But then I separate those three out and the one roast is you know two and a half to three pounds mm -hmm. and like you said it lasts for a few days um after you cook it so to me it it, it is it's a really good deal um and i would much rather pay that than I, the ribeyes have gone up so much even at costco they've gone up yes I did find ribeyes on sale for seven ninety nine a pound. Uh, yeah, I think last nice. week. Um, yeah. yeah, it was very nice. I think I bought about twenty steaks because, and I put them in my freezer. Uh, I have a freezer out in my garage, which I think we're going to talk about a little later. Yes, um, definitely, because you know, but... that is something you know mm -hmm. we're definitely going to. That's in our tips. So, um, so let's go to the next uh, clip, and uh, I want to get to the to the tuna. I. I don't know if that's next. Oh, or not. the tuna, yeah. Cool. Yes. So then we also bought a couple of canned okay. seafood tins. So this is 170 grams um, before you drain it, and that's a dollar forty-six. Skipjack tuna in water. The only thing added is sea salt. So you want to know something that's very hilarious, and by hilarious I mean sad. <laughs> is in California here. It it says on the front of the package. Uh, chunk light tuna in water. But when you look at these ingredients, it is light tuna, water, vegetable broth, wow. and salt. So, and I could not find, if I wanted to get one that did not contain the vegetable salt and I turned around every can of tuna, it would have been about $4 for the can of tuna. Yeah. Um, so okay. I opted for this this can of tuna here, which is a dollar and 14 cents. Now it's a little bit smaller than yours. So with the liquid included, it's 142 grams. Okay, it's comparable. Okay, so yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so I was really surprised by that. Yeah, I was too. And I some of my, uh, I've talked about it on a couple other live streams I've done, and it, it prompted people to run to their kitchens and check their tuna here in the U.S. And they found a vegetable broth in their tuna too, in the like lower end, you know, the, the cans mm -hmm. that are about a dollar, like between a yeah. dollar to two dollars, they're all finding vegetable broth in that tuna. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it one has to wonder what is in the vegetable broth, like, because they're not going to say on the can. It's just going to say, it's like natural flavors. Right. You just have no idea unless you contact the manufacturer and ask them. And people don't tend to do that. So, right. I don't know. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that either. And um, so my, what I've been doing, because I have been trying to kind of uh, follow your lead and, you know, make sure I'm getting enough grams of uh, protein. And so I just do the canned salmon. So the canned mm -hmm. salmon here does not, the, the less expensive canned salmon, you know, uh, wild caught does not yeah. have the broth. So I don't know why yes. they put it in the tuna and not the salmon, but same, yeah. you know, same company, Starkist or fill in the blank, whatever, all of them, you know. Yeah, I, I buy a lot of canned salmon here too. And it's almost, most of it is wild caught. Um, it's hard to even find one that isn't. And it's just, yeah, it's just water uh, and the salmon. And so I feel like that's probably the safest way to go. Um, yeah. and, uh, and sardines are a good budget thing. We didn't buy sardines that day, but we sardines are a great budget thing to have. Um, so I, I think the only other thing that was left on that clip was, was cream cheese. And I, I don't, do you have anything to say about cream cheese? I, I don't really, I, I still have the same package I bought that day. That's I, funny. I so the only that. thing I remember about this cream cheese was the great value brand having quite a few carbs. 
as compared yes. to the Philadelphia brand. So as yes. per the other couple, like the Anato and the vegetable broth, read your labels. Yes. Because it just says that it's cream cheese, but uh, one brand from the next. Um, I think the Great Value brand had like two grams of carbs per per ounce or something like that, which was quite yeah. a bit more. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it was it was kind of, you know, my thing was just to sort of compare. And I and I mm -hmm. I felt that other than maybe the eggs um, and a couple other things that. It, after I did the the conversion, it wasn't that far off in price, yeah. but it was a lesson in label reading, wasn't it? Like it, yeah. it just was really interesting. I um, I never would have thought that about the tuna. That one was a big, uh, it was like a surprise. <laughs> I did eat that can of tuna, but I felt the need to like wash it off. I put it in a strainer and like rinsed yeah. it off because I just, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's not a lot. But I just, I don't know. I don't know. I just felt called to do that. So I did, you know, because I just don't know yeah. what's in that bra. I, I, I don't blame you. So I, I think now, um, because we're halfway through, I want to flip over to see what questions have come in and, and any shout outs to do. So, oh, cool. uh, I want to give a shout out to, to Barb, who became a member of my oh, channel today. Yay, Barb. Thank you so awesome. much. Just Jason Keto is in the house. I want to acknowledge you because you are... Now, why aren't you coming on the screen there? I'm trying to... Uh, we have uh, maybe some slow internet tonight. It must be all that cold. Yeah, Just yeah. Jason Keto, thank you for always coming and supporting this channel. Hi, Sophia. Jason. Okay, so I think we can uh, talk to Sophia here. Uh, ground meat recipes would be great. Oh, it popped away while I was reading it. Um, ground meat recipes would be great as I struggle to enjoy it. Love all other meats, however. Um, so uh, you have a lot of good meat ground beef recipes on your channel that you've done lately. So I think yes. we have some listed uh uh, in your video notes, uh, and I've listed mm -hmm. those same ones in mine. And uh, Sophia, I also have a playlist of budget recipes, and there are some ground beef recipes included in that. Um, but it's definitely something I think I'm going to pay a little more attention to it going forward. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just to to create uh, some more some more interest for ground beef because it is so budget friendly. Yeah, absolutely. I um, it, the, my recipes came from this aversion that I got to ground beef. I just didn't like eating it out of a bowl anymore. Um, but yeah, I, I did a meatloaf recipe relay, and I don't think I linked that one, but I should have because it, what that was it was a different YouTuber, you know, did like a different iteration of the mm -hmm. meatloaf, and it really made it customizable for for people, you know. <laughs> Put the bacon in or not put the cream cheese in or not right, you know kind of right. kind of a thing or well, you, can, you can send me that link and i'll add it to my my video description yeah okay if you cool. like so yeah i, I will but do that that sounds like a good idea because it would show you different ways of of doing a meatloaf because you know mm -hmm. there's so there's so many variations mm -hmm. that you could do there um so carmen hi carmen carmen is always here too she's hi carmen so nice. So my metamorphosis, hi, Christy and Anita. It's 22 degrees outside Nashville at the moment. I guess is that's that. Cold. I guess that's cold for Nashville. That's cold, Carrie. But at least there's no tornadoes. <laughs> there was a tornado, I think, yes. warning the other day. So. Okay, uh, Celia, what do you think about fermented cabbage? Every doctor says it's a miracle what it does in the intestines. Um. I don't uh, have cabbage, um, and I, I don't know if you do either. What, I'm, so, like, sauerkraut, is that is that basically what we're talking about here, fermented cabbage? I, I am into fermentation now, though. I've been fermenting yogurt, the 36-hour oh, okay. fermentation, el ruderi, el ruderi or el roidery. I don't know what it's called. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I... I do know that uh, Dr. Davis of the Super Gut book, he is mm -hmm. really 
uh, into, you know, fermented foods. Um, and that would include cabbage and other vegetables and things like that. Um, but I just don't, I'm open to fermentation, but I just don't know a lot about it to offer anything right, right now. Yeah, I will add to what you said, Dr. Sean O'Mara with the sprinting protocol. He's also very into adding in some fermented veg. Okay. And my uh, cabbage of preference is actually, believe it or not, kimchi. My grandfather mm. uh, was Korean. Okay. Um, and so we would eat kimchi. And I actually did find a clean one. I haven't purchased it yet. I say clean, meaning no added sugar, because a lot of times when you turn over and flip that label around, yes. you know, there'll be sugar in there. Yeah. Um, the one I found, because I don't think I want to attempt making kimchi, but the one I found doesn't have any and I, I just haven't like purchased it yet. But I'll keep you guys posted and let you know. I, okay. I wanted to add a little bit back. Um, I think it'll taste good with my the flank and ribs that I that I definitely. like. To do, so. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, so Sophia has another question. Meatloaf needs flavoring. What other mm. than salt can a carnivore use to flavor it? Great well, question. I, I yes, and I, I I have something to say about that because that you know I get that yeah. kind of thing, um, that kind of comment about uh, well this isn't carnivore, that isn't carnivore. So m my goal in this whole health journey was never it never was I want to be a carnivore. It was always, I want to be as healthy as I can. That has led me to carnivore. And on carnivore, I choose seasonings that I can tolerate, and I don't eat the seasonings that cause me distress. Things like black pepper, anything from the nightshade family. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with calling myself a carnivore while I have some oregano or something like that. Like... Uh, I'm I'm good with it. Um, Christy, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I kind of feel the same way as you. So uh, in terms of her question, as far as flavoring, so what I put, uh, like I said, I did the meatloaf relay and my leg of the relay was like the most basic meatloaf with no ex a lot of, ex not a lot of extras, but it was a couple of pounds of ground beef. And then what I used was um, pork rind crumbs and I used the ones from Porking Good. Mm -hmm. And they, they have like a seasoned one um, that had like, I think some garlic powder and some things like that in there. And then I just did my Redmond salt and then some egg for a binder. But as people added things to it, um, you know, they added like some bacon or something, you know, some things like that. I think one person took out half the beef and did like sausage. So it was like half oh, Italian mm -hmm. sausage, half nice. beef, which gives it kind of a different twist too. So, you know, there's things like that, that that you can do to add it for flavor. Um, the comments that I was getting from the people, because there were several carnivores that tried it, that hadn't had meatloaf since their pre-carnivore days with all the ketchup and stuff, yeah. you know, and um, they said they liked this better. So um, I would just say give it a try uh, with something like that, with whatever seasons you uh, seasonings, excuse me, you can tolerate and um, maybe think about adding those flavored or seasoned pork rinds because that helped bind it together, but also add a little bit of seasoning. I also got the advice to use smoked salt. And I think that would be yes. delicious in a meatloaf. Yes. And I haven't tried yes. it yet, but everybody that's done the smoked salt um, in the meatloaf says it's absolutely delicious. So yeah. I, I like some smoked ideas. salt too. It's good. Yeah. So, I mean, and as far as seasonings for a carnivore, you have to know yourself and what you are, um, what you're like, if you have an autoimmune condition and all you can tolerate is beef and salt, well, that's all you can tolerate. There mm -hmm. isn't, you know, it, but if you don't have that and you can tolerate seasonings, um, you know, it's up to you whether you want to use them or not. Uh, you know, uh, you have to have some, uh, what do I want to say? Like, like just, you just have to know your body and what it can, what it can take and, and then proceed carefully if, mm -hmm. if you're worried about it. Uh, Claudia, uh, has a question. Does canning meat process affect nutritional value of meat? Have little to no space for stocking meat in the freezer, which rarely happens over here anyway. Um, I, I, I think that can I mean canning is something that 
you know, mothers and grandmothers have been doing for generations, I, I think it is a good thing to do if you, I mean, I personally don't can and I don't know how to can. <laughs> um, but I don't think it affects, I, I mean, it, if it does, it's got to be minor, uh, I, I would think. Um, and it's certainly better than not having anything when you when you need it. Um, I should ask my cousin about it because she has she's like a homesteader and mm -hmm. does she cans all the meat from their farm and everything. Um, here in Canada, uh, I don't think you can buy any can much in the way of canned meat other than canned seafood and canned chicken. Um, but there isn't, mm -hmm. like, I've never seen canned beef, for example. Um, mm. So do you know anything about about canning and what it does? No, I don't. I've only just heard people like Dr. Barry talking about all of the meat is going to be better than the not meat, right? So whether it's canned or whatever that might be, if that's yeah. what you have room for, like you're talking about your space, you know, for storage purposes, uh for sure, I, he would say, I've heard him say, you know, go with the, the canned or things like that. Um, I have not heard that it, I have not heard either way, you know, if it negatively or doesn't affect it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe somebody in the audience can tag you if they know. So, never heard of Picanha. <laughs> oh, here We're we go. Going to convert you. <laughs> we are. <laughs> it is very, it, so in my Costco, they call it uh, Sirloin Cap. And you had another name. What did they call it at your store? Um, I've heard or... like it's like sirloin cap at my store or picanha or somebody else said like coulette. I'm not sure how to pronounce oh, it. It's like coulette. Yes. Yes. yes but uh, I've never I've seen, seen it as too. that name here. Yeah. But I've, I've heard that it, it's in some places it's called that. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, it's beautiful m m top sirloin meat with a huge, huge fat cap if you're lucky <laughs> yes and my mom was not i get mine at walmart but not all walmarts have it my mom found that out the hard way she lives about an hour south of me and she went to four different walmarts but she did go to her butcher counter just her butcher counter at the grocery store and they knew exactly what she was talking about and they said to her now normally our policy is to trim the fat to a quarter of an inch and she said, no, thank you. Please just leave all the fat. So if you if you go to your butcher counter, you may be able to kind of customize that and leave on more of the fat cap because that is for sure the best part. It's it, very delicious. It, it makes the whole thing so amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, it's easy to make. Like I, I've never had one turn out, you know, tasting bad or off mm -hmm. or it's just it's easy to cook. So Melissa has come to the rescue here. Picanha is a cut of beef taken from the top of the rump. You might also know it as rump cover. And I have seen rump roast. Uh, rump cover, rump cap, sirloin cap, or even collot steak. So thank you for that, Melissa. Um, oh, I, uh, hang on. Let me go back to the comments here. And... Uh, uh, Susan Lydia says, I like that you bought similar things and comparing stores and prices. Thank you. It, Thanks, it, was, kind, it was kind of fun and a good exercise. Yeah. Uh, loves truth. Ground beef recipes would definitely be good. I think we will both work on that. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny. Danny buys meat in bulk at a restaurant supply store called U.S. Foods Chef Store. Break it down and freeze it. Good savings on most things. Yes, I I agree with that. Um, uh, have, so, Christy, have you ever bought like a whole um, strip loin or a whole one of those long uh, ribeye roasts that you yeah, can yeah. cut up? So I'm laughing because I did try it. So at Christmas time here, the ribeye roasts go on sale and I found one store had them for $5.77 a pound and one store oh. had them for $6.99 a pound. So I went to both stores because there were limits, you know, so I went to both stores and like maxed out my limits and I came home all excited and I'm not a butcher or something. I don't know. People online make it look easy. I ended up just cooking them as roasts 
and mm-hmm. just eating them that way. I could yeah. not get, you know, between the bones and figure that out. So maybe I'll give it another go you should, uh, in the future. You should. You yeah. know, it, it, it is pretty easy. You just need a big knife. I have, yeah. I have a, like a 10 inch knife that I use. Okay. And, in my in my budget videos playlist, I have two videos. One where I butchered, <laughs> and and I'm butchering the butchering. I'm not, you know. Right. I, I I was like, in the video. I was like, okay, if you know any butchers, don't show them this video because they will <laughs> they will laugh at me. Yeah. But I literally just slice those things up, mm-hmm. and so I did a strip loin video, and I did the the big. Uh, rib roast um it was a huge one that came from costco yeah totally worth it i i'm sure i saved like a hundred bucks on each of those. oh that's so awesome it, totally worth it um margo has a question margo's vintage vibes do you eat only organic meat uh i don't think so i don't um, no so no. what I've done, Margo, I like your question. So what I've done is, um, you know, when I can afford to, like I've already said, I do buy the mm-hmm. pasture raised eggs and they're about $5 a dozen here. I don't think I said that. Um, and, but I've also decided when it comes to pork and chicken, um, I do order like pasture raised pork and chicken um, just because, you know, if I can afford it, I, I buy it from one of those companies that just kind of delivers it to you. It's, it's not very expensive, um, compared to what's in the store. Well, the chicken might be a little more expensive. I don't think the pork is that much more. Um, but just since it's not, you know, it, it's a, not a ruminant animal. I don't know. I just thought if I can afford it, I'm going to do that because I, because when I did eat that regular pork after three days and feeling kind of energy drained, I wanted to see if it would make a difference, you know, if I bought the pasture raised. Um, and I haven't tried the pasture raised pork yet. So some came and it's kind of in my freezer. I did eat some of the chicken, um, but I didn't try the three day thing. I just ate chicken once and then went back to beef. <laughs> but beef is just the regular beef. Like I don't, I haven't yet tried any, just whatever beef is um, in the grocery store is what I do. Yeah, I'm generally the same. Now, in the place where I lived before I moved here, there was a butcher in the neighborhood and it was he was uh, like a heritage butcher. Everything in the store was, you know, non non no hormones, non GMO, organic, like all that stuff. And I bought things there wherever I could, like the you know, they would have sales and they would have things in the freezer that were cheaper than than things that were um, in the glass counter. And and so I liked shopping there because, uh, you know, I knew that it was really good quality. But, you know, b- budgetarily, I, I can't afford to just, like, not to refuse to eat unless it's organic or grass-fed or whatever. Like, it's just, it's, it's just not, um, it's just not there. So I just, you know, when I can buy something good, I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and the rest of the time I, I just enjoy the meat and, uh, you know, think how much better it is than what I was doing before, uh, when I was over 320 pounds. <laughs> I mean, it's working for you, Anita. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah. And, and I do feel, I do feel really super healthy. Um, and, and I, uh, you know, I know you do as well. Like mm-hmm. it's, you know, it, it, it's of benefit, even if we're not, you know, perfect, organic, grass fed meat eaters, right. um, you know, we're doing, we're doing the best we can. Yep. A uh, question from Becky. What do you think of canned oysters in olive oil? I couldn't find them in water. I wish I could find canned oysters in mm. olive oil here where I live. It's all sunflower oil there's there's no oysters to be found yeah Mm -hmm. i i just have not been and i even checked canadian amazon i thought well i could order some because i do like canned oysters but Mm. not gonna order them in sunflower oil no i wouldn't either i am not i'm not the person to answer this question becky because i'm not a big seafood the salmon that I'm adding in, Anita can attest to this. this that's like a huge, like she's laughing because it's a huge milestone for me. That's a huge win. Like I'm eating salmon and I'm eating it mostly every day. <laughs> I think the first time I talked to you, you hadn't ever, like since you went carnivore, you hadn't Mm-mm. ever eaten salmon. And, and then you Mm-mm. emailed me and said, I ate salmon. 
<laughs> I did. I did eat salmon. I, I mean, I've eaten salmon in my life, you know, and I even yeah. tried some, they had some at Thanksgiving, like some smoked salmon and I didn't like that. And the can of salmon that I'm doing, I just look at it as like vitamins or something. I'm not enjoying it, you know, but right. it's like, I, I'm doing it. And so I'm pretty right. proud of myself, but I'm not the yeah. one to talk about oysters. Cause I'm for sure never, I haven't eaten them. Yeah. Um, no, I, I would. So for me personally, I would be all over those oysters in the okay. olive oil. Now I know that some people say don't trust the olive oil in the cans and you know, I, I, I get that, but I would be so excited because, I mean, you could always rinse it off if, you know, if you are suspect of the olive oil. I mean, that's what I would do, but at least I would know that, okay, there might be a little bit of olive oil on there. I wouldn't be worried about, um, you know, like if I was to rinse off the ones in the sunflower oil, I pro it's probably seeped in or something. Mm. So, yeah, I'd be happy to find those. Um, so we have an, just one more thing here, and then I've got oh. a couple of uh, questions on my sheet here that we were going to hopefully cover, but look cool. how fast the time went. I know. <laughs> so Audrey, thank you for this. Butcher Wizard is a great YouTube channel for how to cut up large pieces of meat to save tons of money. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great tip. I, yes. So, um, oh, so there is, I forgot to mention this, there is a... A little handout where it's on uh, in uh, Christie's description as well as in my uh, video description. It's just a summary of, I know you can't see it here, but it's so basic, like the, you know, shopping, the sales and the flyers, buy whole cuts and cut yourself. So, oh, here's one of my favorites, save the meat, bones and fat. So. I consider these sorts of things to be free products. You can make your own mayonnaise from some of the fat. You can make your own tallow. You can make bone broth. Bone broth is a huge thing, you know, to make because it's got all that collagen in it. And uh, it's practically free when you save the bones. And then the last, oh, uh, buy whole beef, lamb, or pig. Share it with a friend. Uh, Christy talked about her freezer in the garage and uh, I have one uh, downstairs in the laundry room or what we used to call the laundry room now it's the freezer room <laughs> um, and uh, yeah it, it you know if you can find a space for a little chest freezer or something and learn how to cook the cheaper cuts and and learn what they are um, so I want to get this off the screen now and back to oh there we are <laughs> there we um, are so yeah so i just wanted to to say that that you can download that little sheet uh from both of our our youtubes there and how much time do we have left we still have a few minutes left so so do you think uh it is too expensive to do carnivore or keto uh, absolutely it is not too expensive to do carnivore or keto i What's tricky is my whole family did not come on this ride with me. Um, but when I think about all the things I was eating throughout the day, um, like it hit me, I, I made like a little short about, okay, a pound of ground beef was on sale right now for $2.99 a pound. And like the granola bars I used to eat were like, I, I, I priced it out like price per pound. And it was like triple that price. And how many of those would I eat? And what else would I have to eat throughout the day? Exactly. You know, well, I'm not just eating a granola bar, but like my food for the day might be a pound of ground beef and a few eggs. Yes. Um, and so it's actually, I know it's cheaper, even when I do splurge on a picanha, which is a mild splurge because it's, what did I say? Eight seventy four a pound, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Or when the ribeyes go on sale or that kind of yeah. thing. I 100% um, agree. You've got to compare it to what are the prices of these things that we are not buying because both keto and carnivore are more about what you are leaving out than yes. what you are eating because i think uh even people on standard american diet eat meat but mm -hmm. they're eating all those other things and when you compare nutritionally ounce for ounce yes that is what you have to do like figure out well what does an ounce or four what does four ounces of meat cost or a pound of meat what is a pound of, you know, whatever else you're buying and what is the nutrition per ounce or per yeah. pound or whatever? I, I think people would be surprised if they did that comparison, mm -hmm. you know, as yeah. to what value there is. 
I think when people are coming in, they don't fully comprehend. It's like, no, all that other stuff's going to go away because they're thinking I'm going to be buying all this meat. And they think what their grocery bill already is. And they're thinking yes. about adding all that meat on top of what they're already spending. And yes. to your point, you know, they're not thinking about the things that are, are going to go away. Right. Yes, so. I, I agree. Um, so, so that's something to keep in mind is all the things that you, you are not going to be buying. Um, mm -hmm. and, and even, I guess, you know, uh, like I don't, I don't like to do the carnivore versus keto thing because, uh, I did well on keto for many years. I know many people who do well on keto, mm -hmm. but the carnivore does have that one little advantage of, mm -hmm. of keto in that we're not buying, you know, nut flowers. We're not buying, um, you know, the, the extras that people do buy to make different recipes and things. We're just cooking the meat. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, I, I just, just will throw, throw that out there for the people who are going, Oh, can I go carnivore? It, it sounds expensive. Mm -hmm. Honest to goodness. Um, like, you know, I walk into the store, it takes me 10 minutes, like, or five minutes. Like I'm just going to the meat counter. Yep. The only Beeline. aisle I go down is the fish aisle, like the canned fish aisle. Cause I do like my sardines and my salmon and things. Yep. That's it. I like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not getting that other stuff, you know, unless one of the kids has asked me to pick up something. Mm -hmm. Um, so in your area, so what do you think is the most uh, budget friendly cuts like that are available around where you are? In, so for that? sure, the, the ground beef, which is why I'm glad that yeah. I found those other recipes for sure. The other one is um, Chuck Roast. They're on sale this week for $3.99 a pound. So $3.99 oh. a pound for Chuck Roast. And you can put that in a crock pot. I just did one on Friday. So it's great because like I'm a teacher for those of you that don't know me. Um, and so, yeah, on my way, you know, I got up in the morning, I put my chuck roast in my crock pot on low with just a little water and salt. And it was good. I mean, my, my 15 year old ate a big bowl of it. And so, I mean, there's a ringing endor endorsement, right? Yeah. Um, and three ninety nine a pound, you can't really, can't really beat that. And I do like it better than just a bowl of ground beef. Like I can still do, you know, chuck roast. It's very good. It's very fatty. Um, you know, the little bit of juice in there and it kind of makes a little soup in a way, yeah. you know, when you do it like that, it's really good. Yeah, I, I I think so too. I mean, here our chuck roasts are, or what we call blade roasts are not as cheap as that, but they are still a really good deal and so easy to make. Uh, I would say ground beef we, is, I can often get it in the three to $4 range per pound, mm -hmm. which, which I think is, you know, still really good. It can make, I mean, you can have, uh, budget carnivore if if you're including these types of things in there yeah. and, and then some eggs and things so yeah I think uh, I, I think it's probably it sounds like it's probably about the same uh, in the in both of our countries there and and I, I had a question here um, but I think I think we've answered it in this whole thing and that is that can you can you eat meat based for under ten dollars a day I think you can for sure you know, especially if you're including ground beef and eggs and things like that, I, mm -hmm. I think. Um, so I, uh, I, I, I would say the answer to that is yes. Now, do I, in practice, eat for $10 a day? I generally like to have um, steaks here and there, so probably mm -hmm. not. But if mm -hmm. I had to, I could, and maybe I'll find out once I retire at the end, <laughs> at the end of March. <laughs> right? So what for, I mean, I, like I said, I have my big freezer. So in the summer, the ribeyes go on sale several times throughout the summer for $6.99 a pound. And wow. then I fill my freezer up <laughs> and I save all those bones. I think that was one of the first thing we bonded over was we both have a bone bag in our freezer, uh, you know, for the saving those bones to make the bone broth. Yes, we do. I used, I used to feel like that was like, oh man, I'm paying all this money for these bones. You know, it used to annoy me before I was carnivore. And now I'm like, sweet, I get all these bones and I can get some bone broth. <laughs> yeah. And if you buy bone broth, it can be really pricey to it's buy pricey. bone broth. Yes. Um, so to us, those of us who have a bone bag in our freezer, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, a, that's a, you know, the bone broth is a freebie. Uh, so I, yeah, I like it. Um, I'm just going to pop up a couple more things here. The sure. bearded butcher, we, we are... Uh, getting close to the hour, but uh, we're, we're, 
we're doing well. The Bearded Butchers have many instructional videos about cutting up your own meat. Thank you, Claudia. I think I've heard of them. So yeah, let's, let's look those ones up. Um, Jazzy Mama, your hair looks great. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Margo, Christy, do mm -hmm. you know of anyone who is carnivore and has a survival pantry for disasters? Yeah, that's a great question. So I don't know any carnivores in real life. Uh, I will say that right off the bat. I have a couple of friends and my mom who are like meat based, real food, whole food, keto. Um, but since starting my YouTube channel, I've met several carnivores and there are a few who um, either have homesteads um, or do, do like their own canning and have, you know, shelves and shelves of things that they've prepared. Um, for that kind of a kind of a situation. So I do know a couple, um, but just they're like through YouTube, like YouTube friends, you know. What kind of things do they stock up on? Oh, so I just saw my friend Cammie. Her channel is at Last Day of Normal. Um, and she was actually can canning ground beef. So she had bought a whole bunch of ground beef and she was cooking it up and canning it um, in her pressure canner. I don't know a lot about that. I've never canned okay. in my life. Yeah. It's something yeah. I might have my mom teach me. I mean, she's never canned meat, but she used to can like jams and jellies when I was a kid. Yeah. So I think she yeah. can teach me how to do it. So okay. I may at some point try it, you know, but yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's good to have a pantry stocked with with things. Uh, that used to be my mom's job. And we always used to say mm -hmm. when the a couple a pop, I can't say the word. When the zombie apocalypse <laughs> hits, we go to my mom's. Everybody yeah. head over to Nana's house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, we have used up our hour. I can't believe it. Here we are. Um, thank you, everybody, for all your great questions. Thank you, Christy, for coming on here with me and doing this together and doing the assignment of uh, shopping yeah. you know, at, at Walmart. And I know shopping at Walmart um, is a, it can be a, a, a fun or, or not thing uh, at times. You know, <laughs> it's an adventure all its own. <laughs> it is. It's a, it's a totally different experience uh, every mm -hmm. time you go. So, um, yeah, so we'll have to do something again sometime. Thank you for coming I would love on. to. Yeah, thanks yes. for inviting me. I always yeah. have a great time with you. Yeah, so. yeah, I had a great time with you the other night. So on on your channel too. So yeah. uh, good night, everybody. We will let you guys go and enjoy the rest of your Sunday night. I have uh, some collagen stew waiting for me in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. And uh, all right, um, yeah, that video is coming out uh, tomorrow or the next day. We'll see. Uh, but uh, other than that, you guys have a great time. And we'll see you next time. Please join me next weekend for Alice and Kevin. And we're going to talk about exercise. Awesome. So, Bye, everybody. Good night, everybody.